There's no doubt about it that strength training improves endurance performance. It's all about performance. So in other words, if you aren't hitting the gym, you're probably missing out on fitness gains. But oftentimes it's not just this knowledge that the gym will make me stronger that prevents people from going to the gym, but it's the gym itself that prevents people from going to the gym. So that's exactly where we're headed in today's video. We're gonna answer the question, how as a cyclist do I incorporate strength training into my training program? One of the biggest questions to be asking about strength training for cyclists is how do I fit it in with my bike focused training? Because let's not forget, you're a bike rider and a bike racer, not a bodybuilder. So we need to make sure that cycling is our number one priority. Looking at it from a really big picture, your strength training needs to occur during the off season. And what I mean by off season is the time of the year when racing is not the priority. And this makes sense because when racing is the priority, we obviously want our cycling fitness to be our number one priority, not our gym fitness. A few years ago, I made this chart to help my athletes visualize how both their cycling training and their strength training will align with each other throughout the season. And as you can tell, your heaviest lifting is going to occur early in your cycling training. There's a really practical reason for this. You can't handle the heat, meaning your body just can't handle both really hard bike workouts and really hard gym workouts at the same time. And we really want our really hard bike workouts to occur when cycling is the priority. So during the build and the race period further along in the year. So to contrast that, you've got your heaviest lifting occurring early in the year in that preparation base phase training. So if we go a little bit more smaller picture, this should look like two gym sessions per week during the off season or when you're not racing and one gym session per week throughout the rest of the year. So most of the year, you're just doing one maintenance session per week. But during that short period of time where strength training is a high priority, your strength training should be periodized in such a way to where you're going from easier lifting to quite heavy, hard gym sessions by the end of that max lifting block or early in the base phase of your cycling training. And where you put those gym sessions throughout your week to week training is quite important as well. The first thing that I had read about gym training was that you should put it on your recovery days, which I'm not a big fan of. And in fact, the coaches who recommend that are wrong. You shouldn't do that. If you put your gym sessions on your recovery days, you're compromising recovery. Gym sessions are not easy. And if you go to the gym on your rest days, you're not recovering. So by putting those two gym sessions on your two rest days, you're basically eliminating recovery from your entire training se season. And that is not a good idea. I've also heard of this method of combining your strength training onto the same days that you're doing intervals on the bike. And the concept behind this is if you want your hard days to be hard, well then put all the hard stuff on the same day. And I'm not against this method, but practically speaking, it doesn't seem to work out all that often because cycling is the main priority. And so your bike workout should go first. You should do your intervals before you do the strength training because you wouldn't want to compromise your bike workout for a gym workout because don't forget, cycling is the number one priority. And most of the time when we do our bike workouts, you're pretty smoked after those. And so practically speaking for me personally, I haven't really adopted the intervals and strength training on the same day approach. Although I'm not against this approach and I think this approach could work. Rather what I prefer to do is to do my gym sessions on my endurance ride days. This adds a lot of training in one day as far as time is concerned, but practically speaking that it works for me because I really like doing my gym sessions in the morning, which means if I do them in the morning of intervals, I'm compromising that interval workout. But if I do them in the morning before an endurance ride, I'm not really compromising an endurance ride because on my endurance rides, I'm just getting out and riding. I'm not trying to hit targets or hit power goals. I'm just getting out and riding. And you can ride endurance with a little bit of tiredness or fatigue in your legs. In fact, it might even be a good thing to ride some of those endurance rides with 
tired legs. One more approach that I often adopt with the athletes I coach is that I'll combine strength training and running on the same day to make it almost like an off the bike workout day. Practically speaking, this works a lot because it's really easy to pair both a gym and a run. Most of the time, gyms have treadmills, and so you could do your gym session and then jump on the treadmill right then and there and knock them both out at the same time. And also, as far as just time is consumed, to try to go to the gym and get in a bike ride in the same day is kind of complicated. Like That takes a lot of time out of your day. So practically speaking, that's another approach that I'll use with my athletes. There are two ways you can go about your strength training. You can create a home gym or you can get a gym membership and both have their pluses and minuses. But if you get a gym membership, you're going to need a cool bike to ride to the gym. Maybe a townie or a fixie or a clunker. And I have just the hookup you need. State bicycles. I'm excited to announce that I'll be riding state bikes for the 2024 season. And yes, they do make fixies and clunkers, but I won't be racing fixies and clunkers at the national gravel races I'm going to. In fact, State is making their way into the high performance gravel scene with a carbon gravel bike, the all road carbon. They even have a carbon road bike as well. And I'm stoked to be working with State because of what their mission is. Their goal is to make cycling more accessible to people. At the end of the day, we want more people to ride bikes, but riding bikes is crazy expensive. Bikes are expensive. All the stuff that you need to ride that bike is expensive. And State is all about lowering that barrier of entry, making good bikes at good prices so that more people end up riding bikes. That's something that I can get down with. So be sure to go check out State Bicycle Co. where you could find either your next gym clunker or your next gravel racing rig because they have both of those things pretty awesome and it'll help me out because they've got me set up with an affiliate link that's in the description below which will help me earn commission which I, I will then be able to use for my racing budget throughout the 2024 season and on top of that they're giving all of my followers and supporters a 10 percent discount right here now we get into the nitty-gritty of once i get to the gym what do i do and there is a quite an array of different approaches to this as well. I think the early adopters of the strength training for cyclists and quite frankly, just some old school coaches out there have come up with this mindset of, well, we pedal thousands of times on our bikes at minimal weight. And so we should replicate that when we go to the gym. We should lift really high reps, but really low weight. And I get their thinking, but they're wrong. We already get enough of that style of training on the bike. Rather than replicating or mimicking exactly what we do on the bike, our strength training should complement what we do on the bike, meaning we should do different things in the gym to make our bike riding better. What I'm saying is that you need to lift heavy things, and it's probably a lot less total reps than you're imagining. You should start with low weight and high reps. I will say that because you have to adjust to strength training. So the first few workouts you do should be lightweights at like that 15 to 20 rep range. But eventually you should be increasing the weight you're lifting and decreasing the reps that you're doing. Meaning by the end of your strength training cycle or phase, you should be doing like near max lifts at like one to three rep ranges. And this makes a lot of sense if your goals are primarily neuromuscular. For more on this, watch my other video on strength training where I talk about that. Because when you lift really heavy things, your brain has to figure out new ways to use your muscles and coordinate all of the different muscle fibers in your legs to get that weight off the ground or back to the squat rack. When you lift really light things, your brain isn't doing that. In fact, in one of the primary studies I came across, the lifting protocol was surprisingly minimal. This study on maximal strength training and cycling improvement took 13 cyclists, and of those 13 cyclists, they had eight cyclists incorporate an eight-week strength training protocol. And the protocol was only four by four near max reps of half squats. These sessions only lasted about 20 minutes, 
But let me remind you that this was also the study that concluded that strength training increases your time to exhaustion by 17%. That is a significant gain. You might have been thinking when I mentioned that study in the last video that these dudes were hitting the gym for like hours and hours but it was just two or three 20 minute sessions a week and all they were doing were some half squats. That's crazy. In fact, the overall cycling training of the intervention group was actually lower than the control group, but they still went faster than the people who didn't do any strength training at all. My point here is that you don't need to spend hours and hours in the gym to get significant gains on the bike. I mean, if my math is right, four by four half squats, you're doing 16 squats in a matter of a few 20 minute sessions throughout the week. Come on, that's pretty easy. I'm pretty sure any of us could add a few 20 minute 16 rep workouts to our training regimen. One last note, don't hurt yourself. If you're new to this whole strength training thing, it might be worth it to spend a few sessions with a personal trainer who can help you to adopt the proper form for all of these lifts and make sure you don't get hurt and end up off the bike because of what you did in the gym. I don't want that. You don't want that. Let's be safe here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. If you want to support my video making abilities, there's all kinds of things that you can do to support me. Uh, primarily, you can hire a coach through Ignition. You can uh, drop some change in the Patreon tip jar linked below, uh, or you can use any of the affiliate links of my sponsors in the show notes below. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next one.